for things dumped for tea. And a very, very good morning. I'm sorry about the slight little technical hitch uh, that we had, uh, slightly late going ahead. But um, welcome to the very first A Cup of Tea with Mr. G. I've never done a podcast before, so this is going to hopefully work. Um, I'm using StreamYard, which I've been studying it, and uh, apparently you can put comments on. So if you are watching this, if you just want to send a little comment uh, that would be great. So I know that uh, there is somebody out there who's actually watching the podcast. And um, today uh, I'm having a virtual cup of tea. And here's my cup of tea. OK, uh, PG. PG Grants. Very nice. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome my first ever guest on a cup of tea with Mr. G. And that is my uh, darling friend, uh, the lovely rose cook monk hello rose hello chrissy i've got my tea How too are you, <laughs> oh what are you drinking today rose oh it's um it's a proper cup of tea proper cup of PG is it builder's tips. tea yeah pg just, tips yeah just sort of an in-between one two sugars oh no whiskey. Well, i've got my pg grants and that's especially <laughs> brin especially blended in scotland rose <laughs> thank you so much for joining me and I really just was trying to think, when was the first time that we met? And I know it is on, on a ship when you were lecturing. Where, yeah. Which ship was it? Can you remember? Yes, it was Boudicca, Fred Olson's beautiful Boudicca. Fred Olson Boudicca. And I think it must have been about 2015 or 16 or something when we did um, a med cruise together. Because you were lecturing and... Yeah. Uh, med crews and you, you were on board as a lecturer and i was on as a cabaret tell me about your lecturing how how did you actually get into that it, it really did happen by accident i'd made a documentary about a famous footballer baller that came from my hometown duncan edwards who i know that we're going to talk a little bit about in a, in a little while and um a friend of ours who was the then um agent for cruise ships said that would be a really good um thing to take on on board ships so i started only ever intending to do one cruise really um but i i went along with a different cruise line to what we met on the wonderful cmv and it just sort of took off from there and you know nearly 10 years later i've got 100 talks that i can give and I a hundred, pardon, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred talks, a hundred talks. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I've, I've got to always... ask you, which which would you which would you say are the most popular talks? The raw ones always go down really well. Everyone loves to hear um, sort of the untold stories, if you like, about the royal family, or at least lesser known stories. Um, and there's always a bit of a twist yeah. to them, which I do love. But the music ones go down as well, really well. Uh, the Freddie Mercury and Glenn Miller and Judy Garland. Such as what? Um... Oh, Freddie, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're brilliant stories. Yeah, and I and there's there's always more to do as well. I always look for inspiration for for new talks to give, and and I'm always, I'm always researching and and looking for new ideas. You're going to be doing one on Harry and Markle, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can quite understand Rose, why you would be. <laughs> so rose the, obviously you and me we're we're in the same boat or not in the same boat as it is because yes. cruising we, if we five years ago if we were sat there in the bar and said you know what, in five years time there's not going to be any any cruising and it's all going to be coming to a standstill you would have thought i'd be eating magic mushrooms or something from the caribbean so <laughs> it's absolutely crazy but of course your work as a as a, a lecturer stopped my work as an impressionist stopped so i've had 
to try and move into more voiceover work. What about yourself? What have you managed to do? I, I've been fortunate. I've done a couple of Zoom talks, but I'm not a huge fan uh, of technology. So um, sadly, last year at the end of January, my dad died and I did oh. his funeral service. And, I, and yeah. I've done all of my family's funerals. And But somebody did say that you're really good at that. And I think you should do that perhaps for a living. So I retrained and I became a funeral celebrant. Um, I've got a picture then, of this. This this is this is you, isn't it? It is. This is your. There we are. Yeah, that's me. Um, and I've and got I, to say, I, I've got to say, Rose, I've got to say. Your friend, my darling Corky, um, obviously she passed away in uh, January and you were the celebrant for her service and you said chrissy i want to do this and uh it was such a moving and touching service everybody who went there just they couldn't believe the uh the, the heart and soul that you you gave to uh my corky and dj's mum and his, his brothers and sisters they were just so touched by it how do you okay training to be a celebrant but where does this this compassion where does this this come from where you can actually make it such a personal service i think when you've suffered um grief yourself and i was widowed at quite an early age i was widowed at 32 and i've got three small children um as with everyone else both my parents have died now um and, and lots of grief, really. I've lost lots of loved ones um, in a relatively short space of time as well. And I think you you find where everybody finds ways of getting through grief, don't they? And mine has always been writing, and I and I love people. And 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 for me to do Lindy's funeral will be forever um, an honour to do. You know. A bit, uh, like yourself lindy was my friend and and i loved her and and it was my way of of my gift for you if you like was to to help you say goodbye to her and um i saw a wonderful um saying the other day that remembrance is the last gift of love and it's the I internet think, isn't it sorry, sorry my sorry darling you you were you, you were you were saying obviously being corky's um very close friend and when yes. you offered to do the service, uh, I, I I didn't know what to expect. Uh, but everybody said it was such a beautiful service. And then you've, you've retrained. And is it just funerals that you, obviously, you have to take all your examinations and stuff. Is it just funerals that you do? No, I can do weddings as well. So I'm not right. a registrar. So I can't, it, there has to be a legal ceremony first. But okay. celebrant is celebration. So I celebrate people's lives. And that's either through a funeral or through a wedding service or a naming service, um, a renewal of vows, which I do as well. And I also do end of life services as well to help uh, people who have this impending sorrow going, you know, when they're losing a loved one in, in perhaps a hospice. Um, we get together and, and do yes. that. And it's sort of um, a non-religious last rites, if you like, that the, that the family writes for their loved ones. So it's a privilege to do. So so it, it, it could be um, non-religious nomination. What else would you be able to do? I, I will do services for the um, gay communities as well. Which Brilliant. Is, it's very important. You know, I, I, I want to include everyone. So every yeah. faith, every belief, um, every, every sex, every gender. Love is and love, isn't it? I was, I was looking. Yeah, this is it. And today it's about trying to share the love. And, and uh, I've got a little ticker tape. Hopefully that's working. But if uh, anybody that, that's watching wants to find out more about Rose, either lecturing or her work as a celebrant, then the, 
I'll put her website address at the bottom. So make a note of that. Contact Rose. I was looking at your website, Rose, and there's one thing which really struck me, and that is you can actually have a, a service at the Duncan Edwards Museum because you are the founder of the Duncan Edwards Foundation. So can you t talk us through how all that happened? Well, Duncan Edwards was one of the eight Busby babes who died in the 1958 Munich air crash. So he played for Manchester United, but Duncan actually came from my hometown of Dudley in the West Midlands. Um, and 20 odd years ago, I made a documentary about him. And it was that documentary, as I mentioned, that got me working on the cruise ships um, nearly 10 years ago. That's the and, man. Um, there he is, Duncan. lockdown... So during yeah. lockdown, as well as training to be a celebrant, um, we opened a museum to Duncan in, in my old office, actually, my foundation office. And the foundation... I've got a picture, Rose. Is this the, is this the picture? That's the picture that... of when we that... opened the museum, yes. Wow. And those wonderful people, the gentleman in the grey jacket oh. is Duncan's cousin. Yeah, let me put it back up. That's, right. Yes. So the person to the left is Duncan's cousin. That's Keith. And the other lovely fellas that I'm, I'm surrounded by are the Murphy family. And Jimmy Murphy was Matt Busby's understudy. And Matt, of course, was the famous Manchester United manager at the time of the Munich air crash. So to have those yeah. wonderful guys open my museum was a huge privilege. But um, football, um, regardless of what club you support, is a religion. And it certainly is for the Manchester United supporters. And Old Trafford is um, is their monastery, if you like. So because I've got this museum, which I'm so proud of in Dudley, um, if you are a Manchester United supporter or a supporter of football, a supporter of Duncan or a supporter of history, you can have a really unique uh, ceremony within the walls, if you like, surrounded by Duncan and the Busby Babes and all this wonderful nostalgia that we have up there. So it's very different and very unique. So what was what was the what was the catalyst then to keep Duncan's memory alive? I got to know Duncan's mom really well because I made a documentary about him, and she was such a sweet old lady. You know, it was like going to visit your gran, and we we became really quite close, me and Sarah, Duncan's mom. And I promised her that I would keep Duncan's name alive because Duncan's father had passed away and there was only cousins and second cousins that was alive and she was really worried that he was going to be forgotten. So I made a promise to his mum that I'd keep Duncan's name alive and that's what I've done and it's been in the form of the foundation where we help children who are good at sport but can't afford their kits, their training or their travelling expenses. So we help uh, by giving grants and bursaries. Also during the lockdown, um, we fundraised and we collected 10,000 pieces of PPE and we distributed that to key and care workers. We help with our local food bank and we help with Operation Santa. So we collect presents for children, the elderly and the homeless during uh, the Christmas period. So we really try and do a lot of work in our community to keep Duncan's name alive as well. Oh, bless you. Right. The internet went down. So back again. Bless uh, and you. Anybody that, uh, I'm so sorry about that. It's things we can control and things we can't control. If Larry Grayson was here, he would say, well, I was cock a hoop. I was <laughs> oh, bless you. It's brilliant when it works, and it's awful when it doesn't. Hey, listen, listen, you know, it's it's tickety-boo. I was fascinated in your conversation, and you were saying about Duncan's mother, mm. and you've kept the um, legacy of uh, Duncan alive. You've even wrote a play, and, of I course, this hasn't, be, this hasn't been able to be put on because of COVID. So yes. how, how did you go about this? How many plays have you written? I haven't written any, well, I can't, uh, I say I haven't written any plays. I've always got ideas in my head and I'm always making notes. And But this is the first real serious play that I've written and done something about. And um, 
I, I had the idea and, and sort of scenes going through my head for, for a couple of years, really. And my youngest son, Matt, said, if you don't write this down, Mom, you're going to lose the essence of, of what you want to say. So once I sort of sat down and, and made the effort to write it, I wrote it in about a day. I've added scenes since, but wow. it, it did take me about a day. And, um, and it tells the story right from the beginning of two young people called Sarah and Gladstone, who lived next door to each other and were childhood sweethearts, who got married and had this little boy called Duncan, who went on to become, without doubt, one of the world's greatest footballers. And um, it was due to go on stage last May, and then it was going to be September, and then it was going to be this February. But of course, with the lockdowns and things, there's not a lot that any of us can do just keep this dream alive and that's the name of the play keeping the dream alive and and just know and believe that we are going to perform it and it will be on the stage at some point as soon as we can yes things will change things will change yes and um you, you and me we, we we talk a lot and yeah. uh the foundation you you talk to me about the work of the duncan edwards foundation i've got a little uh i think you're there we are. That's your, yeah. that's your foundation. A wonderful it post. Uh, we talk about a lot. I, I want to obviously try and support your foundation. And you know that uh, Corky's charity, which um, me and DJ wanted to send money to the hospital ward that looked after and obviously tried to save her. Yeah. And that's raised over a thousand, uh, over a thousand pounds at the moment. So I think what, I'd like to do in the future is for us to be able to do something that can raise money for both your foundation and the charity as well. And you came up with a, a I couldn't believe it when you told me this, but your friends from Manchester United, uh, you, we've got a prize which we're going to uh, introduce now. So, Rose, would you tell people what this prize is and then how we can uh, go about having a chance to win it or how, how people can enter? Yeah, thank you, Chris. It's um, I have to say that Manchester United and and especially the Manchester United fans have always been really supportive, um, from day one, from from when I met them all those years ago, and that I do call them my Manchester family and my Red family, and and I, I love them dearly, and that they're, they're fabulous, and the guys at Old Trafford are really supportive too. And they've given us a wonderful prize of a, a VIP day at Old Trafford where they will show wow. you around the ground, show you the famous changing rooms, the tunnel that leads out onto that sacred pitch, um, the wonderful museum, which does include the Munich room as well, which tells the story of Duncan and the babes. And, it, and it's everything. It's a meal in the Red Cafe at the Full Works, a VIP day up in the wonderful city of Manchester at Old Trafford. And our idea is to buy a ticket. Is it, have you got lunch there as well? Is, is it you lunch? You can have lunch, in lunch the included cafe. as well on that? Yes. Um, I, I, yeah, they're, they're, they're fabulous. And, and they will they will look after you so well up there. Um, and, wow. and really, it will just be a fantastic day. And you don't have to be... I've got to ask you a event. question, Rose. Yes, Danny. Sorry, I've got to ask you a question. Obviously, with COVID at the moment, yeah. people are going to say, well, if, if, I, if I was to win this, I'm not going to be able to use it. Is there a, a time limit? No, there's not an expiry date on it. So you can use it as soon as lockdown is over or next year or, or the year after if you have a special anniversary coming up. And could you give it as a prize? Could you give it as a present to somebody? Yeah, absolutely. Could yes, you give it as a present to somebody? It's nameless yeah? as well. So if you win it and you want to gift it, that's it's absolutely perfect. It's a perfect prize for somebody. Right. How how are we gonna how are we gonna do this then? Is it um, ticket price is because it's all going to charity. Hundred percent of this is going to go to charity. Yes. There's there's no money coming off. It's going to be how much a ticket? Ten pounds a ticket. Ten pound a ticket. Yeah. Okay. And people can pay through a, a, you have a paypal account for the foundation is that right yes that's right yes 
Um, so you just I'll post the de I'll get the details from you. Post that. Yeah. So you just put your name uh, in the comments that you'd like to buy a ticket, pay it into the PayPal, and then I think you're going to come up and and have a socially distanced live cup of tea with yeah. Mr G, aren't you? Yes. I Yes, I'm going to do a, a, a cup of tea, Mr. G, live from your museum. Yep. Before I actually pull the, 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 or, you know, find the winner, um, would you give a virtual tour of the museum? Absolutely. I'd love to. I've done it as a, as a living right. storybook, if you like, um, to get the story out to, to children. And, the, and the, the message that I want to give out is that Duncan was just this ordinary young lad from a working class background that believed that he could and he did. And it starts off in a 1930s living room, 1940s bedroom, a 1950s classroom, right up through his career until, of course, that tragic air crash in 1958 so to give you a tour would be fabulous I'd love and that. your friend yeah and your foundation you work with the community and because what i want to do is 10 pound a ticket we'll pay it into the foundation and then we'll split that 50 50 and then 50 percent will go to the hospital charity 50 percent to your foundation i know what obviously the hospital charity is all about where does your money in the foundation what, what type of work would you do Typically, the foundation. What 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 do they do? do, they, do is it well, the, sport the, related or not? Or uh, originally, the foundation was set up to help children who wanted to achieve at sport. But of course, with with COVID and the lockdown, that changed considerably. We've always done as much work as we can in our community, and that's what we want to carry on doing. So, if someone needs our help. Um, we help a lot with the women's refuge uh, for women that have to leave home because oh, of domestic great. violence. So, yeah, and and I think you've experienced, yeah. Chris, some of the work that we do in our community. Um, we've recently put out an appeal for Easter eggs, oh, so we distribute Easter eggs to children, and yeah, we we try and do as much as we can help the homeless, go, the children. Again children um that need help we will we will offer help to we've recently put out an appeal for easter eggs do you do a christmas rose christmas is a very important time for us we help um with dudley cvs's um operation santa appeal and last christmas just gone covid christmas was especially busy for us um we helped thousands of people over christmas uh, children the elderly and homeless that would not have a um, a christmas present it's it's a really um important time for us can i be your can i be your santa can oh, i be your would santa love it. we would love you to be our santa can i be your we, santa we we normally I'll come uh, do up and be... meals for children over christmas but of course because of the lockdown regulations we couldn't do that this year uh, last year so this year we are hoping to get children right. a hot meal again that they wouldn't have on christmas day so for you to be our santa chris would be perfect Lost last you year again. again so yeah christmas meals christmas meals and everything it's a big thing for you i'm yes. going to come up is, is is it two days would would that cover all the kids that you you have to see and yeah, it would it would cover. We do two Christmas parties where we give children a hot meal. And, right, um, I'm your Santa. Don't look fabulous. for any other Santa. I'm going to be your Santa. Fabulous. My colleague okay. Eileen Fielding, who runs Operation Santa, will be delighted. I know she will. Yeah, I've I've done Santa before, so um, the look on children's and adults faces yeah because okay. children still have that wonderful belief and imagination and Absolutely. it's uh, such rewarding work and it's when i when we come off i'll get the diary out and we'll sort that out so we've got a plan of action okay. uh we're gonna put the details up on a post with the paypal details explaining uh 50% of the money is going to go to your foundation. 50% is going to go to hospital. It'll all be on a post. Rose, I'm going to toast you with me cup of PG Grants. Me too. Ching, ching. 
Ching, ching. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. I wish you every success with your celebrant, the lecturing when it comes back, the work at the Duncan Edwards Foundation. And um, thank, you. thank you ever so much. And uh, I'll, I'll speak to you very soon. So I'm going to. I'm going to take you off the screen now, if I can bye. do this. Uh, bye, my darling. Bye. Well, thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us. First time I've done this, and of course, internet problems. I don't know how this has affected things, whether we've got a broadcast or not, but uh, this is going to be a, a regular thing. And uh, if you would like to actually come on and have a virtual cup of tea, Mr. G., then just uh, message me through Facebook and uh, it'll be lovely. Everybody has a story to tell and I would just love to be able to talk to you. And like I did with Rose, I'll give you a shout out. And when business comes back again, if you're an entertainer um, or musician, put your website dress down there and uh, you never know. Somebody might be looking and think we'll have him for our party or for our next cruise, whatever. So for me, Krista G have a, a wonderful uh, day today and uh, I'll be putting the post up with all the details of how you can buy uh, a ticket to win that wonderful prize uh, that Rose was talking about. So um, from me, Christopher G, a very good bye. Bye. And everything's for tea.